Masayoshi Son is here. He is the founder, CEO, and chairman of SoftBank Corporation. SoftBank is one of Japan's largest mobile carriers and one of the world's largest tech companies. In 2013, it acquired Sprint for almost $22 billion. It also has stakes in over a thousand other companies, including Yahoo Japan and Alibaba. Forbes recently estimated his net worth at $18.4 billion. That makes him the richest man in Japan. I am pleased to have him here at this table for the first time. Welcome. Good, Thank good you. to have you on the program. Thank you very much. You're going to speak to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce yes. this week in Washington. Yes. What are you going to tell them about the wireless revolution? Well, I would say that the, um, the mobile Internet, the in Internet highway, is the most important infrastructure for the 21st century. To me, it is so clear than any, any other infrastructure that's more important uh, for the 21st century. However, U.S. is number 15 in the world. When, when someone did the survey, out of 16, number 15. Mm -hmm. So only in, in country... In terms of what, what speed, measurement? Speed. speed. L, yeah, okay. LT speed. Right. Okay? So the only company U.S. beat was the uh, Philippines. They beat the Philippines. Yes. <laughs> they didn't beat South Korea. They didn't beat Japan. No, no. Many yeah. other countries, uh, you know, the U.S. was beaten. So is it, is it good enough situation for the 21st century, the most important infrastructure? U.S. is lagging behind. And U.S. has been number one for infrastructure almost for anything in the 20th century. Automobile, the electricity the um, uh, television, almost everything. And uh, you believe that is because two carriers, Verizon and AT&T, have more than 60% of the market? Yeah, more than 75% on postpaid yes. and more than 80% for corporate market. Right. So and they are stifling innovation in your judgment? They are happy with where, where, where they are. They make a ton of money and free cash flow are uh, all dividend back to the shareholders. So they are very comfortable where, where they are, which I don't blame, you know. If, if I were on their shoes, I would be happy. But because they are in such a happy position without facing a real competition from some strong enough challenger, they can relax. Okay, so you bought Sprint, yes. a carrier. Yes. And now you want to buy T-Mobile. If we could, but uh, we have not uh, agreed any uh, formal agreement. You haven't made an agreement with T-Mobile? No, not yet. What are your chances? I don't know. We have to, we have to give a shot. Is it, is, it, is it money or is it something else? Is it? Well, I, I'm not here to talk about any detail of that situation. <laughs> no. uh, Why I, not? <laughs> well, look, you know, in, in general, we have to, we have to say. You have to make a deal. Yeah, we, we would like to we would like to make the deal happen, but there are steps and details that we have to work out. Tom Wheeler is chairman of the FCC, and, and he has suggested that that he wants to make sure there's a lot of competition in the market. Right. And so he's not in favor generally in mergers between say Sprint and T-Mobile, and you own Sprint, so therefore you'd have a huge position in the American market. Yeah. Well, look, you know. There is a two big duopolist, yes. right? And they take more than 100% of total industry free cash flow. Total industry's profit, they are concentrated to have 90%. So here comes the uh, two little ones who are not able to fight with, without enough scale. So that's, that's no mm -hmm. good. And I think uh, the situation needs to be changed. Assuming you could make a deal and had Sprint and then T-Mobile, what would you be able to do uh, as a carrier in the United States? Well, um, look, we need a, a certain scale, but once we have a, a, enough scale to have a level fight, okay, it's a three heavyweight fight. Right. Right? Well, you then, like that, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I would like to have the, the real fight, okay, not the pseudo fight, right. the real fight. If I ha can have a real fight, I go in more massive price war, right? The you, technology that's your, war. That's your pattern. When you get a stakeholder, you undersell everybody. Yes. Yes. You're willing to postpone profits 
in order to gain market share. Exactly. I want to be number one, right? Yeah. So if we were number three and if we had a, enough chance, okay, I want to be number one. So I would go, you know, price competition, you know, very much aggressively and network competition to create a world best network. I told you now, U.S. is number 15 out of 16. Yes. I, I, I'm ashamed of that. You know, I am I'm not here not to criticize U.S. situation. I'm here to say I now own the part of the responsibility and I would like to provide U.S. citizens the world number one network. Let me go back to Japan. What was it like growing up in Japan, the uh, son of Korean and Chinese ancestors? It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, Japan is a homogeneous you know, race country, yes. one culture with one race. So if you are considered outsider, it's not easy. But nowadays, uh, I s stick up enough so people know that I am, I am you know, hmm. just myself. And then at 16, you came to San Francisco. Yes. Made your way to uh, Berkeley, University yes. of California at Berkeley. Yes. yes. Uh, and then you graduated. What did you want to do when you got out of Berkeley? Well, Make I wanted to start my own company. So when, when I was a student at Berkeley at 19 years old, I already started a small company mm -hmm. and uh, made the first electronic dictionary. Yeah, pocket, dictionary first. Yes. Yes. And pocket. pocket uh, translator and uh, dictionary. Yes. yes. And then sold it? To Sharp. To Shaw. Yeah, mm -hmm. for $1.7 million. Yeah. For a 19 years old kid, mm -hmm. it's, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay? And uh, I, I did another computer game project, made me another $1.5 mm -hmm. million. Dollars. So I got uh, a little over $3 million when I was 19. That was a good seed capital for myself. <laughs> yes, I, I, I never used the venture capital. Yeah. So uh, you, you never went out and raised money, but you had the money no. yourself. That's better because you don't have to. In the, lead, the fewer partners you have, the better off you are. Well, if you could succeed. Yes. yes. Yeah. If you can get by without their capital. Yeah. yeah. So when did you go back to Japan? Right after I graduate, I yeah. went back to Japan because yeah. I promised to my mother that yeah. as soon as I finish my college, I will be back to Japan. So I yeah. kept my word. Yeah. And then you began your march to where you are today. Yes. Yeah. You seem to have done it by two things. W uh, not only your own company, but investing in other companies. Yes. I mean, you've had a keen eye for what might be a successful investment. Yes. Yahoo Japan. Yes. I mean, this is the most recent one, Alibaba. Yes. Alibaba is going to be a huge payday for you. Yes. Yes. It'll be one of the li largest IPOs around. Yeah. Yeah. We are lucky. Yeah. Well, you, you need a luck once in a while. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You, your heroes were uh, Mr. Honda mm -hmm. and Mr. Morita, yes, who formed exactly. Sony. You like them because? Because they, they have a passion, they have a vision, and they're founders of a you know, huge brand. Because they are pioneers. Know, yeah. They pioneered electronic industry, they pioneered automobile industry in Japan, fighting with incumbents, not helped by the government, but they made mm. themselves. You admire Bill Gates and yes. Steve Jobs a lot. Yes. Steve Jobs, you thought, was what? You know, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, with the art and technology combined. Yeah, the design and the engineering as yes, well. Yes. He saw with Johnny Ives, yes. understood how to do that. Yeah, so in, in 500 years later, people would compare you know, Steve Jobs with Da Vinci. That's my view. And when he look, went looking for somebody to, a carrier in Japan for his iPhone, mm -hmm. you said, me. Yeah, that was <laughs> two years before he introduced iPhone. Yes. So I said, you know, if I would enter into the mobile uh, business, you know, mobile carrier business, I need a weapon. And who can create the best weapon in the world? I said, it's only one guy, Steve Jobs. So did you call him up or did you go yeah. see him? I, I called him up and went to see him. And I, I brought my little drawing of iPod with, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, mobile uh, capability. Yes. 